In this video, I'm going to teach you an efficient and easy to understand method that will let you find the determinant of a five by five matrix. So the trick that I always use is to use triangular matrices. And so a triangular matrix takes this form here. So we've got a diagonal running down here and all of the elements below that diagonal are zero. So this is what we call upper triangular form. And the joy of triangular matrices is that finding the determinant is incredibly simple and you can literally do it by looking. So the property is if you take the diagonal and you multiply all of the elements, so in this case one times three times minus two times one times one, do all that multiplication and you instantly get the determinant. And we can see all the elements are one except for this three and minus two, we multiply those together and we get minus six. So just by looking at a triangular matrix, we can instantly work out the determinant. However, not every single matrix in the world is triangular. And so that's going to be a problem. However, we can make matrices triangular and we can do that by swapping rows or by taking combinations or doing other operations on matrices. However, there's two rules that you have to remember. One is that row operations, so taking multiples of rows, adding and subtracting rows, for example, that does not affect the determinant. But row exchanges swap the signs. So if you were to take row three and swap it with row two, for example, that's going to switch the sign. So the determinant of that new matrix is going to have the opposite sign to your original matrix in terms of its determinant. So you have to keep track of that. And so I'm going to show you how I tend to keep track of that. So here's our example. What is the determinant of this matrix? And so to make things a little more straightforward, I've given a sparse matrix. So that limits the number of operations, but it does work for non-sparse matrices. So basically what we need to do is we need to turn this matrix into a triangular matrix. So basically you see all this area here all of those numbers have to be zero. So we basically have to wipe out all of the numbers that are not zero. And I'm gonna show you how we do that. So let's start with our original matrix here. And so I'm gonna label this as plus. So our determinant hasn't changed yet. We've not done any row operations that have swapped things around. So we've not done row exchanges. So therefore determinant is left alone. However, this is not in the form that we want. So the first thing I'm going to target here is this minus three, because it's quite obvious that this three and this minus three can be combined to get rid of it. So I'm going to say that row two is going to become row two plus row one. So our new row two is going to be equal to row two plus row one. And so that's going to give us this. So, you know, this minus three plus three is zero. And this minus two plus zero is unaffected. Zero plus zero is unaffected. However, we're going to get a three here, because we're going to do zero plus three, giving us a three there, and this zero is unaffected. So we've done a simple row operation, and because we've not swapped any rows, this is still plus. So we've not changed the sign of the determinant. However, now we're going to swap row three and row two, because this row two is kind of how we want row three to look with these two zeros, and row three here has got one zero here, which is what we would like to have in row two. So we just simply swap those around, and that's what I've done there. Those two rows have just swapped. However, our rule on the previous slide says that when we do a swap of rows, it becomes negative. So I'm going to put a negative sign there to tell me that I need to swap the sign of the determinant. So the determinant of this matrix is going to be the opposite sign to the determinant of this matrix. But we want to know what the determinant of this matrix is, so we have to swap this one ar around in terms of sign so we get the determinant of the correct matrix. So next step, row five is the one that we have to deal with. Everything else looks fine. So row five, we have to do a couple of operations. So we're doing row five is becoming row five minus row two that gives us this matrix here. Since we've went through some previous ones in depth, I'm going to speed up a little bit so you can check these out for yourself. They all work. Then we're going to say that row five becomes row five plus row three. That's going to get rid of the two here. And so that two's gone, but we've went and introduced the three, which is a nuisance. But thankfully, our row four here has got this three, so we can use that very simply to get rid of it. 
So row five is going to be row five minus row four. And we now have it in triangular form. And we've only done one row exchange back here. So since we've got an odd number of row exchanges, our determinant is still going to be the opposite. So let's actually find our final answer. So we need to take the determinant of this triangular matrix. And I've put this minus out in front because I've got this minus here. Then we take the diagonal, multiply all of these together, and that gives us our final answer, which the determinant comes out as minus 18. And that's our final answer. So hopefully you found this method easy to understand and quite an efficient way of doing it. I hope this video was helpful to you and thank you very much for watching.